Jerry Schilling, a friend of Teenage Elvis, describes him as a pecorious reader, very spiritual, and lovable rebel. In 1953, Elvis graduated high school. In April of 53, Elvis performed as one of the 22 acts in the Hume's High Annual Minstrel Show. Nobody knew I even sang, he said. It was amazing how popular I became after that. Elvis graduated from high school that year and eventually got a job driving a supply truck for Crown Electric. In August of 53, 18-year-old Elvis went down to Memphis Recording Service on Union Avenue, the home of Sun Records, run by Sam Phillips. Uh, he was a friend of disc jockey Dewey Phillips to make a record. Like Elvis, Sam Phillips was passionate about music, especially the music that white people liked when they weren't sure if they ought to or not. Which I thought was a strange quote, but okay. Elvis cut a record that day for $3.95. And Phillips told him that he would call him back. Phillips didn't call. In 1954, Elvis went back and cut another record. On Saturday, June 26th, 1954, Elvis got a call from Marion Kiesker, the receptionist at Sun Records. And in a story that is now world famous, she asked him if he could be there by three. And Elvis jokingly said, I was there by the time she hung up the phone. Now that first session didn't work out so well, but in July, Elvis and guitarist Scotty Moore and bassist Bill Black, after a slow start, kind of hit on something while they were just actually fooling around. They had been kind of trying things that day and it wasn't really working out. And Elvis kind of just grabbed this guitar and he just started playing like a sped up version of Mississippi crooner Arthur Big Boy Crudups. That's all right. And when Phillips heard it, he actually was like walking down the hall and he turned back and he stuck his head in and he was like, what was that? And the three men really couldn't explain it exactly. So they just played it again. And this was exactly the sound, the music that Sam Phillips had been looking for. Although he had been unable to tell them how to get there. Sam's brother Dewey was sold on this music too. And when he played it on his red hot and blue radio show, the listeners went crazy. Dewey was kept busy on the telephone taking request after request to replay this song. 
Opry manager Tim, Jim Denny told Phillips that his sinker was not bad, but he did not suit the program. So this rockabilly sound was the hallmark of the first five singles that Elvis released from the Sun Records over the next year. Now, none of them became a national hit um, by August of 1955 when he released the fifth Mystery Train, arguably Elvis's greatest record ever. He had attracted a substantial Southern following for his recordings. His live appearances in regional roadhouses and clubs and his radio performances on nationally aired Louisiana Hayride. Elvis's management was then turned over to Colonel Tom Parker, who is portrayed by Tom Hanks in the new movie, but we'll talk about that later. Tom Parker was a country music hustler who had made stars of Eddie Arnold and Hank Snow. Parker arranged for Elvis's song catalog and recording contract to be sold to major New York City-based enterprises Hill and Range and RCA Victor, respectively. Sun received a total of $35,000. Elvis only got $5,000 of that, which is bonkers to me. So Elvis began recording at RCA Studio in Nashville with a somewhat larger group of musicians, but still including Moore, Black, and Fontana. And they began to create a national sensation of hits. Heartbreak Hotel, Don't Be Cruel, Love Me Tender all came out in 1956. All Shook Up came out in 57. So from 1956 to 1958, Elvis completely dominated the bestseller charts and ushered in the age of rock and roll, opening doors for both white and black rock artists. His television experiences, I'm sorry, appearances, I typed experiences, especially those on Ed Sullivan's Sunday Night Variety Show, set records for the size of the audience. Even his films were box office smashes. Elvis became the teen idol of his decade. He was greeted everywhere by screaming hordes of young women. And when it was announced in early 1958 that he had been drafted and he would enter the United States Army, there was like a moment of true grief in the country. He eventually served in Germany for about a year and a half. I'm kind of skimming over the details, but, you know, shortly before Elvis left for Europe, 
actress's only child, Lisa Marie, was born February 1st during a period of time where Elvis had become really unhappy with his career. He and Colonel Parker managed to maneuver a deal with NBC that committed the network to both finance a theatrical feature and broadcast a Christmas special. Recorded in late June in Burbank, California, the special, simply called Elvis. 
Chris and his wife filed for divorce on August 18th. According to reports, Elvis's failed marriage was a blow from which he never recovered. I truly believe she was like the one woman he ever really loved. His divorce was finalized on October 9th, 1973. By then, Elvis's health was in a serious decline. Twice during that year, he overdosed on barbiturates, spending three days in a coma in his hotel suite after the first incident. Toward the end of 73, he was hospitalized, semi-comatose from the effects of a pethidine addiction. According to his personal primary care physician, Dr. George Nicopoulos, I'm sure I said that wrong, Elvis felt like getting the drugs from a doctor because he wasn't the common everyday junkie getting stuff off the street. Since his comeback, he had staged more live shows each passing year, and 73 saw 168 concerts, his busiest schedule ever. Now, despite his failing health in 1974, he undertook another intense touring schedule. Presley and Linda split in November of 76, and he got a new girlfriend, Ginger Alden. He, in fact, proposed to her and gave her an engagement ring just two months later. Several of his friends later claimed that he really had no serious intention of actually marrying again. And in 1977, journalist Tony Shearman wrote, and I hate to say this, but I have to give you every side of it, Presley had become a grotesque caricature of his sleek, energetic former self. Grossly overweight, his mind dulled by the pharmacopoeia he daily ingested, was barely able to pull himself through his abbreviated concerts. In Alexandria, Louisiana, he was on stage less than an hour and was slurring so much he was impossible to understand. On March 31st, Elvis canceled a performance in Baton Rouge, unable to get out of his hotel bed. A total of four shows had to be canceled and rescheduled. Way Down, Elvis's last single issued during his lifetime, was released on June 6, 1977. That month, CBS taped two concerts for a TV special, Elvis in Concert, to be broadcast in October. The first shot in Omaha on June 19th. Elvis's voice is described as almost unrecognizable, a small, childlike instrument in which he talks more often than sings most of the songs, and casts about uncertainty for melody in others. Elvis is virtually unable to articulate or project. Two days later, in Rapid City, South Dakota, he looked healthier, seemed to have lost a little weight, and sounded better, too. Though, by the conclusion of the performance, his face was framed in a helmet of blue-black hair from which sweat sheets down over pale, swollen cheeks. Elvis's final concert was held in Indianapolis in Market Square Arena on June 26th, 1977. On the evening of Tuesday, August 16th, 1977, Elvis was scheduled to fly out of Memphis to start another tour. And I read this and I couldn't, I knew what happened, but I didn't realize it was like hours. So he suffered from extreme constipation based on all of the medicines that he was taking to wake up and go to sleep and all this stuff. So he told Ginger that he was going to the bathroom and she realized like a couple of hours later that she hadn't seen Elvis wandering around in Graceland doing anything. And I was like, what? Like a couple of hours? Bananas. Okay. So that afternoon, Ginger discovers Elvis in a responsive state on the bathroom floor at Graceland. According to her eyewitness account, Elvis looked as though his entire body had completely frozen in the seated position while using the bathroom, and that he had fallen forward directly in front of it. It was clear that from the time whatever hit him to the moment he landed on the floor, he hadn't moved talk about that in a minute. Multiple attempts to revive him failed, and he was pronounced dead at Baptist Memorial Hospital at 3.30 p.m. 
actually killing two young women and injuring a third. About 80,000 people lined the processional route to Forest Hill Cemetery, where Elvis was buried next to his mother. Within a few weeks, Way Down topped the country and UK singles chart. Following an attempt to actually steal Elvis's body in late August, he and Gladys were both moved to Graceland's Meditation Garden on October 3rd. Now, yes, I did skim over some stuff, um, but we could be here forever talking about all of the stuff about Graceland and the Jungle Room and the Pink Cadillacs and all of that stuff. And really, I would love to sit here and chat about all of that, but I honestly don't know how many of you are actually even going to watch this video. So first, I think it's very strange that he was found basically still looking as though he was seated on the toilet. Let me tell you why, okay? We, we all know that rigor mortis doesn't set in immediately, so it's not like he died and he froze in this position. You know, he would have slumped even forward or whatever, um, and then to be still sort of in like a seated position while on the floor, I find that very, very strange. Now, while I was researching this case, I read, you know, he was on Dilaudid, he was on Oxycodone, he was on all these things, and I was like, but why? But why? Okay, I understand he kind of lived this nocturnal sort of lifestyle. So he had concerts and he partied all night and he wanted to sleep during the day. So he took this medicine to sleep and then he took this medicine to wake up. But no one could tell me why he was on all this pain medicine. Like, what did he have that hurt so bad? Like, why did this personal Dr. Nikopoulos give him all of this stuff? Like, there's... Now I search, but I didn't, like, deep dive into it. I didn't get into, like, documentaries and stuff, because I've watched them all, but I guess I don't remember, um, why. That doctor actually, I think, ended up having his medical license revoked, uh, later on. Now, I absolutely... I was gonna grab something, and I don't even know if I can reach it from where I'm at. Maybe... I'm just 
it stars Austin Butler and Olivia something I'm gonna say wrong like Deshaun or something like that regardless the previews are incredible but I am completely um, baffled at the fact that they actually did not use Elvis's voice for this whole movie like I thought okay Austin would be acting as Elvis and they would just dub in Elvis's singing voice but they didn't they actually used this kid's voice and they did say that during the older scenes where Elvis is older they kind of dubbed him together but that's completely crazy to me that they did this so anyway I do hope you guys enjoyed this video I know that it's not true crime and that is why a lot of you are here but honestly sometimes I have to take a break from the sadness of true crime it is incredibly sad that Elvis died as well but murder and mayhem sometimes are not what I am in the mood for if you're still here and you're still listening I am covering and I'll show you because it's right here I am currently oh gosh I'm currently reading this Jack the Ripper book over on Patreon which you can join us for as low as two dollars a month if you're interested in that part two will be coming out this week on Wednesday which is when I post over there um although I'm not really sure if anybody liked it or not because nobody ever comments on my patreon videos hardly so anyway thank you guys so so much for watching and please let me know down below if you love Elvis as much as I do and if you saw the movie what you thought of it because I really want to see it but I'm also cheap so I may wait until it is on like HBO Max or whatever I have so many movies that I need to see <sighs> I'm so behind. I just don't have time to sit down and watch a movie. There's just too much stuff. 